usually Sassy reviews something in her house. <laughs> I'm saying as if she owns the place. But today is a special one, as 2015 was when I reviewed the Nintendo classic Super Mario Bros. 2, as well as talking about its original version, the Japanese Mario 2, mentioning its ports, and also covering some tragedy for it. I must have looked so beautiful back then. Oh my god! To be fair, that was before Sassy murdered me for the first time. Anyway, I was created so that Sassy can use me for a series of videos. And she also had the bright idea to pair the other gamer in 2015, and I did most of the talk. At the end of the day, I was quite fed up with her, but she shot me, leading to a missed deadline. But now I'm back, baby! I waited so long for her to come out as trans, so that my plan comes to fruition. I had this feeling she was trans, and I was afraid that I was wrong. Today, I'm finally reviewing Grand Christmas Port for the PlayStation. Yeah! Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Logically, I will review some random LJN game or Mario 3, but not this time. Remember this part? Well, I was thinking of giving you a copy of Action 52 for the NES. Yep, I'm reviewing Action 52 for the NES. A game's compilation so bad that even Sassy doesn't have the guts to review it. She can review shitty Spectrum Race, but not this? What a coward. Actually, I can review Shut it. Shut up! Not much is known about the man behind the game, Vince Perry. There aren't even pictures of the guy. Basically, what I got is that he claimed to be a businessman, and wanted to create this after looking at his son playing with a Taiwanese multi-game cartridge. Because it was illegal, he tried to do the opposite. Even though it was released as an unlicensed game, but at least it has quote, new and original unquote games, it says here on the back of the box. After getting raised 20 million bucks from backers, one of them being from Saudi Arabia, he hired some programmers and, well, it was hell. They had to develop the game in a span of 3 months with little to no QA, and when it managed to get released in 91, it had a suggested retail price of $199, or $347 in today's money. Fucking Christ, that's supposed to get around 4,000 a game, 6.5 in today's money. Although, even in the early 90s, they played like 50 cent shovelware. Every time you boot the game up, you get this unskippable intro with a simple of It Takes Two by Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock, complete with a shitty pun. Make your selection now. First game is Fire Breaver, the only two player game in the cart. Sure, every game has a two player mode, but it's just for taking turns. As this is a shooting game where you must kill your opponent. There's no AI, I meaning that it's only player versus player. Hey, Chase, wanna play Fire Breaver with me? The game is fairly simple, even if it feels like someone's school assignments. If they named it the Firestarter, I would have laughed at a sort of reference to that 80s Drew Barrymore movie. And I saw an excuse to call the Prodigy a bunch of ripoff artists. Rest in peace. Next up, Star Evil, which is a. Uh. Okay, under that beginner's trap, it's just an easy shooter. A really boring, easy shooter. You can actually cross the whole level without killing any enemies with ease. Until you reach the boss spot, which they can be a bitch. And what's with these enemy designs? Next level. I mean, next game. Third one is Illuminator. Oh, it's one of those, huh? Here you must kill the vampires or zombies or whatever they are in the dark levels. When you start, you only get two seconds to see what's going on before it turns dark. The same can be said when you kill one. It can get quite annoying when you try to avoid them in the dark, since you can't see yourself most of the time, leaving you vulnerable to the enemies, unless you're in the ladders. And it's hard to climb them, making them worse than Half-Life. The first three levels is, um... Well, I can't say they're easy, but they're manageable. Level 2 introduces the shadow people, which can either move really fast, or just stay there, sometimes having a seizure. Fourth level may make traversing the dark easier, but the bats are a nuisance. And when they kill you, you get turned to a piece of shit. Or is that a cocoon? Oh, and don't fall into the hole, because you'll die for a few inches of air for some reason. This would have been a mediocre game, if it weren't for the darkness. Number 4, G-Force Fa- <laughs> Let's just call it G-Force, not to be confused by that hamster flick. It's a horizontal shooter, nothing special except for the hit detection. Apparently the pixels are bigger than I thought. At least there's a life bar, although there's no way to replenish it, unless you finish the level. There's only three levels, and the final one is pathetically easy. Just stay in this one spot and don't do anything. 
You win! Except you're sent back to the first level after that. Don't make me do that again! Yeah, there's this funny theme where most of the games only have three levels, and when you beat them, you do the first level again. No end screen, no nothing, just repetition. But not the fifth game, ooze! Complete with a toilet screen, apparently. Get that cold Yoko shit on my head! It's a platform where you shoot at green slime to progress. To jump, you press B. What? The jump control is shit. You don't jump like any normal game. If you hold B, you're frozen and can't move until the jump is done. I mean, why would you do that? Tumping when walking will do just fine. And it doesn't matter how long you hold the jump button, since the height is the same either way. And since every platform in this card has the same control scheme as Zeus, you must keep that shit in mind. Now, the happy slimes can be killed, but those big slimies aren't, and it's hard to jump over them due to the shitty jump physics and hit detection. Ugh. The next two levels are easier though, with the second one being just a hurdle challenge. Fourth level's a bitch though, they just throw everything at you, and they also suffer some of the same problem from Illuminator, where you die for a few inches at mid-air. It was this contest related to beating the game, but unfortunately, if you play it on real hardware, the game crashes after beating level 2. So if you want to rest, you must play it on the emulator. And if the first players manage to beat it, they get this screen, where they must take a photo of the code and send it to the developers for a prize. I wonder what it is, a bunch of copies of Extra 52? Nope, it's $104,000 in cash and a scholarship. Too bad nobody won, but at least there's an ending screen! Alright, let's play Silver Sword next. Oh look, it's a crappy version of Pocky and Rocky, except this came before it. Man, there's too much green here, and the sword isn't even silver! Fucking false advertisement! God damn hit detection, why is it so shit? It's not just that, the enemies move so randomly and so unpredictable, you have a hard time killing them. You only have three hits to take, so don't fuck this up. Managed to get to the second level, and what am I looking at? I can't tell if that's either mayonnaise or... It all looks samey. I want more, damn it. I take it back! Next up is Critical BP, something something Deepwater Horizon. Oh, it's actually Critical Bypass? What? Ah! Sorry. So sorry. I should have put an epilepsy warning before I show footage of that. It's just another show where you destroy homing meteors and Tetris squares. I don't know about you, but the hits is just charming. Jupiter's scope is next, where you shoot at meteor falling from the sky, although they look more like flaming condoms. This is just boring, they take too long to appear, and every level looks exactly the same. No thanks, come back when you make a death animation. Game 9, Alfredo, or Alfred and the Fetic? What even is that? Oh, they made the same Fettuccines. I have to mention that this is one of the two games that don't work on actual hardware until Revisions game. If you try playing it, it just brings a black screen, so you have to reset the console and endure the intro. Thankfully I'm playing with an emulator where the ROM version is fixed, so now I can see the match is it up, it fucking sucks. Got the idea, didn't I? It's basically just ooze, but much easier, and you use a pad to hit enemies. Well, it isn't easier, because the enemies just come at you fast when they spawn. Ugh. Operation Moon is next. Wait, no, I meant Operation Full Moon. Not that shit again! At least it isn't as bad looking as Critical Bypass because the background is green. Although it's making me nauseous when playing. No joke, I rarely get sick with playing games, but this is an exception. It's so easy, every enemy is the turret shooting horizontally, it is a a challenge. The only challenge here is to finish the game without puking. Second level is blue. Oh gee, does that mean the next level is gonna look red? What a disappointment. Next up is Dam Buses, where you don't actually blow up dams. You play as Xi Jinping, and now I'm banned from China. You basically shoot at enemies and go right to progress. And it's one of those games where you can't go back, meaning that you'll get stuck here if you choose the top way. I hate how the enemies spawn at random and have random shooting patterns, sometimes making them impossible to avoid. And how come this doesn't have a health bar since you can get hit multiple times before dying? That's a problem with some games, it's so inconsistent. Next up, this. Oh great, another vertical shooter, but this time, the second level is sketch when you die. Next! Number 13 is Haunted Hill. Oh good, another tile change to Haunted Halls. <laughs> Move! 
move over, Lara Croft. There's a new bossy adventure in town. It's just a cover cup you have ooze, just for some of the cheapness and with a slower jump. Although it also has depth from a few feet. I actually thought that was part of the foreground. I know I started shooter, but it's just annoying that I have to wait until the sword disappears until you shoot again. Is that an onion with a balloon on his head? Actually it's a spider, but I don't like the confusion. Chill out? I'm gonna be doing that to the play it. This is just illuminated, but it would help bar and no thanks to turning off. Amazing! It still sucks. Number 15. Burger King Foot Lettuce. Oh fuck off. Oh great, it's a ripoff of Jaws for the NES. Why would you do that? Fucking hell, it has the same problem Jupiter Scope has, but worse. It takes an eternity for them to spawn, and it's tedious and fucking annoying. I don't like how you die. What is this? I'm finally at level 3! Pass the nuka call to me. Can you dig the music here? How eccentric. Megalonia is next. I expect it to say Megalovania or something. Oh fuck, it's G Force again! It has bosses on like that, but still, fuck that. French Baker, it's like shell out, only more bearable despite the glitches and monkey enemy designs, but it's still decent. Kind of. I also suffers from death from a few inches I just. Atmos quick. It's fucking Star Evil! First page done, and so far I haven't got my money's worth. Ugh, somebody call 911. Because I'm being forced to do a rob pun! It's not a great first impression when it has a multiplayer only game as your first game, and fucking repeats. Yeah, I'm not taking a closer look at them individual like this guy. Why would I? I don't want to waste two hours of your life. Next is Myong. Yeah, I think I get it now. What you're supposed to do is reach to the top and avoid the trap blocks, which will admin if you wait. Dodging those will kill you, as well as the pyramids, holes, and wait for a few seconds. There's nothing else to say, or then it's fine. That's something you don't hear me say it. Space dreams? I wonder what it is! Well, it is a space shooter, but you're a baby shooting at dolls, mobiles, and safety pins. I didn't expect that when I first saw it. Also, it reuses some parts from the song in Damn Busters, and when you die, you explode into the trans bright colors. Oh gee, thanks. Streamers? Is this a game about Twitch? No, it's a game where you play as a clown grappling onto other platforms since you can't jump apparently. Also, money can hurt you for some reason. Must be a metaphor for something. Some platforms are impossible to get on without taking damage since there's enemies on there. And since you can't shoot them, you'll get frustrated. Also, the title screen doesn't have the title on it. What's next, uh, spread fire? Another shooter where you play as a lobster shooting at enemies moving randomly? This time without any music? Boring. Bubblegum Rosie, I mean Bubblegum Rossi? Ah, a Barbie ripoff. Where are the sound effects? Just another platform with spikes would hurt you apparently. I should get to the second level where- Oh, come on! I'm fine. Totally fine. Micro Mike is next and- Whoa, 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 come the fuck down! You play as a dildo, I think. And you go very fast, meaning that it's impossible to know when to go up or down without cheating. Man, fuck this. Underground, where you traverse the caverns to get to the top. And also sheep enemy spawns and poisonous mushrooms. Other than that, it's mediocre. Rocket Jockey! It's another space shooter where you play as that guy at the ending from Dr. Strangelove. Boring. Next is non-human and... What the fuck? It's a platform where you move slowly, but the aesthetic is so bizarre. And there's this part in the first level where you must jump over the blocks, although sometimes yet detection fucks you up. What the shit? Crybaby is just French breaker, but as a baby to think toys and use the furniture as ladders. I don't know why they place a table that you can climb rather than for killing yourself. I think a baby could survive that. Slashers? Is this a horror game? Reality is soft and disappointing. It's a beat em up, except it's slowing on pure luck. You keep mashing the buttons to kill them, and a few times you get hit, and then you die. Boring. Crazy Shuffle, where you're a tiny person shooting at tiny flies. It's bad, but the music makes up for it. Power, a platform where you must kill hair tools by doing the spinning thing like Sonic. Uh, should I censor this? It's practically impossible to avoid the bullets from the hair dry in some instances, and whoever came up with the design must have a foot fetish. Look, I'm not a king shaman, it's just that the only foot fetish I enjoy is when I jerk someone's cock. <laughs> Shooting gal? 
Oh, it's shooting gallery. It's fucking spread fire, except the enemies don't shoot nor touch you. Boring. Lollipop is a platform where you kill baddies with your lollipop. And you don't climb ladders normally. No! You jump to climb! Although some enemies are on top of them, and since you're a one-hit wonder, it's impossible. Even though there's something special that you can collect up there. What is this mess? Evil Empire. It's chill out, but with tiny sprites. At least for all that makes more sense here. Or would even more sense if they actually hit before you die. Some purpose is like Silver Sword, but much easier. Don't know why you're stuck on the road and can't get to the sidewalks in the first level. What the? Storm over D? Oh, it's Storm over the Desert. Sorry. It's a game where you drop an invincible tank and shoot at or run over the tank, soldiers, and Saddam fucking your sign while during the good old Atari 2600 sounds. Also, the first level is on the grassy field. Fucking fast advertisement again. Over two thirds of the collection is done, and I'm surprised I'm still civil as ever. I can't goddamn take it seriously about my fucking limit! Yeah, at this point, I'm just covering the gates of rapid fire speed until the very last game. I just don't want to suffer as much as the other people who cover the multi cart, and I also have other things to worry about. Anyway, Mushman, where you play as a repurposed sprite from First Power. Not unlike us, huh? There's no special moves here, but you can stomp on some enemies, at first in Action 52, even though everyone just stands there. What's with the aesthetic though? Am I repairing myself now? Next is... they came. Oh frick, it's another space shooter! As if I had enough of them! Oh, and there's barely any sound, that's lovely. Laser League, for the Z for some reason- Oh fuck! Why is the music the humming sounds from the ceiling lights in the back rooms? Billy Bob is just a shitty ripoff of Prince of Persia, complete with single screens that can fuck you up and kill you. Jumping is really abysmal compared to other platformers. Sometimes it won't let you jump off a pit, making it feel like my controller is having problems. Coming ledges works fine, it's just that regular jumping sucks. And why bother giving the guy a gun if the only enemies are falling objects? City of Doom, more like Tower of Doom, where you must climb it to get to the top while shooting at falling enemies. Man, this tower looks like it's going to space. Oh, you motherfucker. Bits and pieces is a horror game? It has monsters that it takes place in a graveyard, but more or less is considered horror. All you do here is jump over enemies and reach the end. Eventually. It's just boring like most of the games. Beeps and bleeps. Another space shooter! It's just like they came, and it even uses the same song from that. But thankfully you can hear the shooting and explosions, and this is the last one of the bunch, so that's a relief. Next is Manchester. Well, this seems like an accurate representation of the city. Music notes from Iron Free, metal punks that don't do anything offensive, flying ninja stars... I've never been to that city. Who put this fire sprite that I can't put out? How am I supposed to progress? I'm on the display every time I jump. Ah, uh, enough of that mad chest of crap. Number 45 is boss. Oh, no music as well. That has to be the slowest jump I've ever seen. Ah, uh, it has these parts where someone drops bombs and you have to time it well to cross it. Else, you die. And these fellows who come out of nowhere just kill you if you don't have the reflexes. What's so bossy about it? This isn't a boss rush type game. Dead ass is a shitty name, and it's another shitty shooter. At least it isn't in space. You're an ant who shoots other ants and other insects, and you can only move left and right, meaning that if someone gets to the bottom part, you're screwed. Lovely. Pambo? Yeah, no. You play as a pig who must get to the door without dying. You only have one life unless you pick up a one-up. And the enemy spawns are randomized. Did that just be Ashen's game of a record? Fuck. Time Warp Tickers is next, and... I should really stop smoking weed for a while. Wait, no, it's the game itself, what the fuck? Time? I don't know. Next is Jigsaw. The last of the two games are only work on an emulator. I mean, even if it works on an actual NES, what do you expect on a game called Jigsaw? A game where you're a handyman and killing sentient tools? What the fuck? I was just kidding! I love how you die in this game. BOOM! They just disintegrate, like that! It's still just all Freya, so don't bother. Right, three games left before I stop. Ninja Assault. Honestly, under the dog running at you, it's quite a decent game. Well, 
there is the usual beat em up stuff in the first and fourth level, you have only a boss fight with wind chains at level 2, and jumping on logs and avoid the rolling ones at the next, and so far, it's fine. This feels like there's some effort into it. And then level 4 gives the glitch sprites, and I stop playing. At least the music is great, not gonna lie, some songs are actually good, although that's because they're stolen from a music making program for the Atari ST. And apparently use the same music code used in NES games by Scobert Software, oh good! Second to last game, Robin and the Robots. Wow, looks like Lewis from Meet the Robinsons wearing a dress! You gotta love the walking sounds. Watch out, he's back in heat! It's just ooze but more annoying. Right, last game, Cheetah Men. Active Enterprises had big plans about it. They wanted to make them the next Ninja Turtles. They put a comic book based on it in the box, the protagonists were featured prominently in an after for the game, they had plans for action figures, an animated show, and a sequel, as well as a handheld console that could play NES and make it right through this tiny screen. All plans are eventually cancelled, although they were product of the Cheetah Man 2 for the NES, somewhere in the world. It don't come cheap. So, did they put most of their effort into this compared to every other game? Well, what do you think they did? There's this cutscene where a gamer gets their crotch grabbed into the gaming world, and the cheating men tell them that they will defeat the enemies for them. What's the fucking point of this kid then? The cheating men ran off, and now the cheating men! This game was made in the US. Every two levels, you play as a different cheating man Ares is first with his clubs, Hercules with his fist, and Apollo with his crossbow. It's mediocre at best. You kill enemies living from other games with the cards, and you defeat a boss in every second level. This one is quite easy, they just move left and right, no major attacks or anything. Hercules is a bitch, some ground enemies are small and hard to hit, and these bullets are hard to avoid. Big boy can't take it well. Man, this song is actually the best, even if the intro sounds like something out of Ace Attorney and Saber Gunner just did that, huh? And then there's the second boss, and that one's a hot ass. They ram at you and can kill you instantly. What you gotta do is get to the other side of the screen and wait for them to hit. And once that's over, uh... Nothing happens? Really? <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure there's a way to get to level 5, but I'm not bothered to. I'm not stealing enough for it. This game's compilation sucks. The games are shit and are boring, they look like ass at times, it's a complete waste of money, and I've just lost many hours of my life playing it for your amusement. Two years later, a Mega Drive version was made. <laughs> no. Bottom line, Action 52 is really bad. That's all I can say. Man, have I butchered the script so much after editing a suicide, didn't I? Face it, YouTube is ruined. <laughs>